of Well, good morning to you and welcome to Morning Mail. Today is Tuesday the 29th of March 2022. Wonderful to see you today and to be with you. Trust that your day has begun well and will continue to do so throughout the day. Appreciate you taking the time to stop and to be with us uh, in this uh, morning devotional uh, this morning. Let's begin with prayer. And then we're going to move right into another passage from Ephesians chapter 5. Bow with me, please. Loving Father, thank you so much for the day that you've blessed us with. I pray, Father, that as we open your word in our morning mail session this morning, that you will guide us and lead us and help us to understand more about your will for our lives. And I pray that we will come forward following this session with a greater trust in you and faith and zeal and desire to do your will. Father, you know our hearts are concerned about the situation in our world, particularly in Ukraine. And I pray, Father, for that country and for my brothers and sisters there. And I just pray, Father, that soon this will end and things can start to go back to a better way. Father, I pray for our own country, the United States. We're not very good either. We have much discontent and turmoil and I just pray Father that we can turn our country back towards you in doing your will. I thank you for the Bible, for Jesus, for the sacrifice that Jesus made on our behalf, for the opportunity to follow and do your will throughout our lives. In the name of Jesus, amen. Well, from the time they're very young, many children in local congregations enjoy singing, This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. But you know, that's much more than just a children's song. It gives an accurate view of life. Life is a moral struggle between darkness and light. And as Christians, we are in the middle of that struggle. The Word of God calls upon us to make a difference, to be light in a dark world. The Bible identifies us as children of light. If you have your Bible there with you, let me encourage you to open it to Ephesians chapter 5. And let's read verses 8 through 13. For you were formerly darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the light consists in all goodness and righteousness and truth, trying to learn what is pleasing to the Lord. Do not participate in the unfruitful deeds of darkness, but instead even expose them. For it is disgraceful even to speak of the things which are done by them in secret. But all things become visible when they are exposed by the light, for everything that becomes visible is 
light. Now notice again what verse 8 says. For you were formerly darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. Paul saw a benefit in mentor, mentioning what our past lives were like. He did not want Christians to forget the condition we were in without Jesus. This passage sums up our former lives with one word, darkness. We not only lived in darkness, we were darkness. God's word describes that dark darkness of our former lives. Darkness takes delight in doing wrong and rejoices in the perversity produced by evil. Proverbs 2 verse 14. Darkness is the way of the wicked. Proverbs 4 verse 19. It reverses God's decrees, calling evil good and good evil. Isaiah 5 verse 20. And darkness imprisons people. Isaiah 42 verse 7. We are told that darkness has the power to pervade the whole body. Matthew 6, 23. The Bible declares that sinners will be cast into outer darkness in judgment. Matthew 8, 12. It also says that people reject Jesus because they love darkness rather than light. John 8, excuse me, John 3, verse 19. In darkness... People come under the power of Satan. Acts 26, verse 18. In fact, darkness is a power itself, a, a power from which we cannot escape by ourselves. Colossians 1, verses 12 and 13. Darkness blinds people. 1 John 2, verse 11. Later in this Ephesian letter, we read that, quote, Our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this darkness, against the spiritual host of wickedness in the heavenly places. End quote, Ephesians 6.12. In close to 100 passages in the Bible, we discover the evil and the damage of moral darkness. I do not think that Christians understand how dark the darkness of the world really is. We do not think about it. We may prefer thinking about being children of light, but we must not forget the danger of the darkness. Darkness is behind every crime statistic we read in the news. Darkness has been the power at work in every act of sin ever committed. Darkness destroys marriages, produces drug addicts, gives birth to hatred. It provides the breeding ground for lust, and it fuels abuse and violence. Darkness encourages envy, stirs up strife, and causes selfishness to thrive. It, just, it drives human beings to unthinkable actions. Turn with me to Romans chapter 1. 
I want to read just a few verses from that uh, very powerful passage as Paul begins the book of Romans. Chapter 1, I want to read verse 21 and then move to verse 28 and read through verse 31. Romans 1, 21. For even though they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks, but they became futile in their speculations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Now jump down to verse 28. And just as they did not fit, see fit to acknowledge God any longer, God gave them over to a depraved mind to do those things which are not proper, being filled with all unrighteousness, wicked, wickedness, greed, evil, full of murder, strife, deceit, malice. They are gossips, slanderers, haters of God, insolent, arrogant, boastful, inventors of evil, disobedient to parents, without understanding, untrustworthy, unloving, unmerciful. And let's go ahead and finish the chapter. Verse 32, and although they know the ordinance of God, that those who practice such things are worthy of death, they not only do the same, but also give hearty approval to those who practice them. Folks, before Christ, we were not just in darkness. We were darkness. Now, although we once were darkness, we are now light in the Lord. Back to Ephesians 5, verse 8. Paul called on Christians then to walk as children of light. Notice what God's word says about light. First, light produces good fruit. The next verse in Ephesians 5, verse 9 says, quote, For the fruit of the light consists in all goodness and righteousness and truth. End quote. Think about those three. Goodness has to do with moral excellence. We go beyond knowing the truth. We live it. Light produces fruit. It finds its fullest expression in serving willingly and sacrificially for the benefits of others. Righteousness is, quote, giving to men and to God that which is their due, end quote. That's the way William Barclay defined it in his commentary on the letters to the Galatians and Ephesians, page 164. It means behaving toward God and people the way we ought to behave toward them. And then truth. Truth is not so much something we know, but something that we do. Light makes us strong enough not only to know the truth, but to live it. Light produces good fruit. Second, light finds out what pleases the Lord. Ephesians 5.10 The word translated, quote, trying to learn, in quote, could also be translated discovers. That word came out of the marketplaces of the ancient East. The little shops of those marketplaces 
in, in the crowded bazaars that they were, seldom had windows. They were dark. And the merchandise was hard to see. Careful inspection was almost impossible. People would take a clay pot or a piece of cloth or whatever it was they wanted to purchase and go outside to hold it up to the light. Then they could see and find any flaws, cracks, or stains that they could not see in the dark shop. Living close to Jesus does this for us. His light helps us to see what our motives, actions, and words are really like. His light helps us to see what is in us that pleases Jesus, as well as what moral flaws and sins exist in us and need to be removed from our lives. Third, light exposes evil. Verses 11 to 13 here in Ephesians 5. Paul wrote, quote, Do not participate in the unfruitful deeds of darkness, but instead even expose them. For it is disgraceful even to speak of the things which are done by them in secret. But all things become visible when they are exposed by the light. For everything that becomes visible is light. End quote. The way to expose evil is to shine the spotlight of truth on it. Several years ago, our daughters were, I think, like three and six years old. They were young. And we had the opportunity to go to Carlsbad, New Mexico and go through Carlsbad Caverns. At one point during our tour, the guide turned out the lights. He gave us an opportunity to experience total darkness. It seemed to wrap around us, almost to overwhelm us. I could not see anything in that darkness, not even my hand right up almost touching my face. When the guide flipped the switch on again. In an instant, the darkness was gone. Light prevails over darkness. That was true in a cave in New Mexico, and it is true in our spiritual lives. The light of Jesus prevails over darkness. Every person who belongs to Christ is a child of God. Through the gospel of Jesus Christ and is a living testimony that light prevails over darkness. We were once darkness, but now we are light in the Lord. Jesus cares enough for us to shine his light into our lives to penetrate the darkness and to bring us to light. Let us live as children of light. Go to school this week and remember that you are a light in that place. Go to work this week and be light for people around you. Be a light for those in your home. Let them see Jesus when they see you. Well, on tomorrow's morning mail, we're going to look at Paul's wake-up call in Ephesians 5 verses 14 through 18. I hope you can be with me then. 
Let's close this morning's morning mail with prayer. Gracious Father, we again bow in your presence in gratitude for all you do for us, for the light that you have made to shine into our lives through Jesus, for the light that illuminates the darkness and shows us the way, the way to leave the darkness and to come to you, the light. And Father, I just pray that you would help us as children of light to shine that light into the darkness of the world around us, that others might not look at us, but look at you and see your light in us and be drawn to you to walk in the light of your word. Father, we know that as we do that, as Christians, the blood of Jesus continues to cleanse us. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. We'll go out and make your Tuesday a wonderful day. Lord willing, we'll be back tomorrow at 10 o'clock for another morning mail.